Well, hello there. Thank you for joining us here at the Riverside Public Library. I'm Mr. Brian, and today we're at the beautiful new main library in one of its many quiet study rooms. And for our summer reading program, Reading Colors Your World, our stream slash STEM activity, we're gonna be talking about catapults. Awesome. So we're gonna talk about how a catapult works. And afterwards, I'm gonna show you guys how to make your very own catapult out of some popsicle sticks, some rubber bands, and a plastic spoon. All right, let's get started. So, talking about a catapult, the first thing we need is a catapult. So let's get our catapult right here. There's our catapult. All right, so when we have a catapult, we also have the item that we're gonna fly through the air, and that's gonna be called our projectile. So a projectile is what we're gonna be making fly through the air. So when we're working a catapult, what we're really talking about is energy. So when we bring down our catapult here, we're gonna be creating potential energy. So that's gonna be our potential energy. And when we release our catapult, that's gonna create our kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is also known as motion energy. And motion can only go four ways. We can make it go up, down, to the right, or forward, and backwards. And that's all gonna depend on this right here, which is gonna be our launch angle. So our launch angle will tell us where our projectile is gonna fly. It could either fly straight up or straight across. And if we have the right uh, angle right here, we can make it go up and across. So that is our catapult. Now the fun part is let's create our catapult. All right. All right, now it's time to make our catapult. So our catapult, we're gonna need three things. First, we're gonna need our craft sticks, and we're gonna need 12 of them. So let's count out and make sure we got 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. All right, so we got 12 of our craft sticks. We're gonna take two of them out, put them to the side right over here. And then we have our little stack of 10. Now we're gonna to need to secure them. So in order to secure them, we're gonna use rubber bands. So I like to use six rubber bands in total. So we got one, two, three, four, five, and six. So let's secure the end of our sticks together. So we're gonna use a rubber band. We're just gonna wrap it around a few times until it's nice and tight, right at the very end right here. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna grab one of our other sticks that we put aside, and we're gonna put it between the last one over here. So we're gonna just slide them apart we're going to fit this stick right in between them here. 
And do you see how we have our ninth stick, our tenth stick right here, and then our other stick right in between it? So now we're going to secure this side by rubber banding them together. So we'll get another rubber band. And we got our side right there. So we have a rubber band this side, this side, and then we have one more stick in between our ninth stick and our tenth stick right here. We'll put that to the side. And our next step is we're going to secure our spoon to our last craft stick. So we got our plastic spoon. And again, we're going to use our rubber bands to secure it right here. So I like to use three rubber bands when I'm securing my spoon. I like to have one on top, one on the bottom, and one in the middle. So we'll slide this one down to the bottom. There we go. To me, it just makes it so our spoon doesn't wobble as much. Now, if you don't have six rubber bands laying around, you only you can only find five. You could always just secure your spoon with two rubber bands like that. But I like to bring them down right to the middle. And if you can't find rubber bands, you can also use hair ties. I know I have plenty of hair ties laying around the house. So if I couldn't find any rubber bands, I would look for some hair ties. All right, and now our spoon doesn't wobble that much. So our next step is we're going to secure the bottom end to our bottom right over here by wrapping the rubber band around it again. So it's a lot of wrapping these rubber bands back and forth. Once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. See if I could do it over side here. Now that this end is secure, we have our catapult. Just like on our diagram, huh? Now remember, when we bring this down, that's how we create our potential energy. And when we let go, the energy is transferred to a projectile and it becomes kinetic energy. So let's get our projectile. I like to use little marshmallows. To me, little marshmallows are just perfect for it. If you don't have marshmallows, just anything that really fits in the spoon. Uh, I like to use raisins or Cheerios all those types of good stuff. All right, so when we launch, we want to take, I usually use my two fingers, place right here, or you can place your whole hand. And push our two fingers right here, and then we're going to bring back our spoon to create our potential energy. And when we release, we're going to create our kinetic energy. Are you ready? All right, here we go. Release! Not at me! Alright, so when your mom or your dad gets tired of you launching marshmallows or raisins at them, or they're flying all over the house and they're stepping on them, it's a good idea maybe to come up with a little game. So, me and Melina, our game was we set up some cups at the end of the table and we just take turns launching marshmallows and see who could get them in the cup. It's a cool game. It's fun. It's just something a little extra to do with your catapult. I hope you guys have fun and enjoy launching oh, your marshmallows, raisins, Red. Cheerios, whatever you could find. Alrighty. Bye. See you guys next week. Have fun.